Celebrate, regenerate, mangrove giver of life. Celebrate, regenerate, mangrove bringer of life. We only saw you as a wasteland, an obstacle in the way. On a road to wealth and progress A path that's led astray But your branches are a haven To birds of so many kinds Your beautiful leaves are an endless feast For the creatures in the sea And find know what you really are a treasure beyond the price So instead of cutting you down, down, down We'll change and do what's right Celebrate, regenerate Mongrel, give her a life Celebrate, regenerate Mongrel, bring her a life Celebrate, regenerate, mangrove, bring a fly. Celebrate, regenerate, mangrove, give her a fly. What are we doing, Michael? We're out floating in the Pacific right here in Monterey Bay. Got a booger, hold on. <laughs> I always got a booger. Ready? Ready. Okay. Hey, so I'm Michael Stewart, co-founder of Sea Trees, and uh, we're here at our new project site, um, which is right in Monterey Bay. We're literally floating in the Pacific right now, right above Tanker's Reef, just outside of the <clears throat> Monterey Municipal Wharf. Got my buddy Tyler Fox behind the camera here. And we are watching uh, the installation of the project happen with our partners from Reef Check California. These guys are literally right under us, under the kelp forest, or what's going to be the kelp forest, doing the installation of the perimeter area around it. It's going to be 100 meters by 100 meters. That's going to be the project site for the next two years. We're going to see if we can create a seed bank of a new kelp forest here that can actually repopulate the entire coast right here the next mile up up to marina what a cool project I mean, 100 meters each way, 100 square meters. That's amazing. 300 uh, feet of kelp floor square. square. Um, I'm wearing this amazing shirt that Charlie created the art for. And, uh, you know, all the donations are going back to sea trees. And uh, I just wanted to talk about the ocean and how important it is. And I know that, Ashley, you have maybe a little ocean song to kick us off with, potentially. Is that happening now or are we going to wait for that later? I think we might be closing with that. Oh, cool, cool. Well, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, like everything going on with sea trees and all of us share a beautiful love for the ocean. And, you know, there's just so much going on and so much we have to learn from you guys. And I would just love to kind of hear a little bit more on, on what's going on. And, and can we meet some of the sea, uh, the sea trees people, Michael and Kevin and Charlie been working on the art? What's going down? Tell us what up. Man, well, um, thanks. Just amazing to see all these shiny, happy faces here. Um, friends, what a great time to have lunch. Um, and yeah, um, we're really uh, uh, honored to have um, kind humans um, help bring everyone um, you know, together here so that we can actually talk about what's really cool, what's happening with our uh, Sea Trees program, what we're trying to uh, do with it, and uh, essentially how we're trying to use um, you know, uh, art, community, surf culture, um, scientists, um, ocean conservation, um, to really, uh, help heal and, um, regenerate our ocean planet. So, um, it's pretty simple really. So yeah, just welcome everyone. Um, and, um, let me just kind of give a quick sort of kickoff about what, um, sea trees is, um, 
who we are and um, you know, kind of how we got here. So is that all right, Cassia? I mean, that would be great. And I also want to just let everybody know that like basically by purchasing this shirt, you're planting trees in the sea. And, you know, just like it's so important to me as a surfer, I've just seen stuff go down. And, you know, you're just like not seeing life out there when you're surfing. You're seeing less and less life and less and less kelp and how important the kelp forests are and mangrove forests to really sequestering carbon. And like, that's why I'm super into this project that you guys are all doing and know how vitally important it is. And it's just so nice to collaborate, you know, with the kind home humans folks and all of us being here together to just help share the message, you know? So I'm, I'm super pumped to hear more about what you have to say, Michael. Thanks so much. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, thanks to you and Ashley for being um, longtime, uh, you know, ambassadors for us and um, for the change that we've been trying to make. Um, you guys are obviously doing that in your own ways, in your own lives, and um, I want to hear more about that later too. So, um, but first of all, just let me, um, yeah, sort of kick this off. So, um, myself and Kevin um, are the co-founders of a nonprofit called Sustainable Surf. Kevin and I actually kicked this off. Um, Kevin, it's been a decade, man. <laughs> kind of crazy, right? So yeah, we kicked this off back in 2011 um, up here in uh, San Francisco where our um, headquarter office is. We're actually um, in uh, Marin right now. Um, our offices are literally on the water. We have seaplanes and a houseboat community right out the door here. Um, and uh, yeah, so the ocean is lapping um, at our doorstep. Uh, and we actually see some of these issues that um, the world is starting to deal with related to climate change and the climate change impact right now, right? So um, on the high tides, and we're not even talking like king tides, right? We're talking um, just normal high tides. We actually can't park in, the, in our parking lot. Um, and we've had water literally up to the door of our offices, right? That's an indication of uh, you know, sea level rise, which is um, happening directly due to uh, you know, climate change impacts. Um, so it's like a daily reminder and we're, uh, you know, blessed to actually be here to have that, um, you know, sort of ever present. Um, and the reason I'm bringing that up is that the reason that Kevin and I really wanted to start Sustainable Surf in the first place was that a decade ago, we'd been working in uh, ocean conservation, um, you know, for a decade previous uh, to that. And we're both um, surfers at heart, passionate about, uh, you know, where we play. And we didn't see this conversation about um, surf culture really understanding what was happening related to climate change and how it was actually showing up in the oceans first, right? So things like sea level rise, which we can all see, things like um, the oceans becoming more acidic um, and actually helping to wipe out, um, you know, coral reefs around the world, right? It's like we could see these things happening and surfers really should be the first people to give a crap about this and to want to do something, right? And we want to catalyze um, that uh, movement within surf culture. So all, all of our programs up to this date, which have included um, you know, certifications for more eco-friendly surfboards, um, working with the uh, WSL to make more ocean-friendly surfing events, doing upcycling projects, and now our latest and greatest program, which is called Sea Trees. Sea trees is really super simple. Um, I'm just going to give you the basics and then Kevin will go into the uh, science about it. But uh, in short, sea trees um, is our program um, to basically help reverse climate change um, through restoring and protecting um, blue carbon or coastal ecosystems that we all, you know, are passionate about uh, playing in and also live in. And those ecosystems are like mangrove forest um, in uh, tropical areas, um, kelp forests like we have right here in California, um, you know, seagrass meadows, um, uh, coral reefs, right? All of these places that uh, as surfers we're passionate about playing in and we want to help protect those and wanted to make it really super easy and engaging for um, almost anyone, actually for anyone in the world to become an ocean advocate and directly help fund the restoration of uh, these ecosystems which are in fact doing the hard work for reversing the impacts of climate change. Because what they do is, you know, they're these living systems, right, of the earth that are there. They're the ones that are already sucking the carbon out of the air normally, storing it in their leaves and the branches and down actually in, into the soils, right? 
That's how this thing works. They're the ones doing the hard work of pulling the carbon out of the air, which we need them to do, locking it away long term, and along the way, you know, pro providing uh, habitat for all the sea creatures that um, we love, you know, seals, sharks, whales, uh, otters, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really that direct. These ecosystems have been severely impacted. Um, in California, we've actually lost, in, in Northern California, we've actually lost 95% of our historical kelp forest in California. Um, I'm gonna kick it off to Kevin to go into the science of how we got, you know, from there to, uh, to where we are now. And our specific focus here in California on um, restoring and bringing back kelp forests. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, let me just share my screen here and I can show you a few slides, all right. Okay, here we go. So basically this is a, a healthy, beautiful kelp forest, you know, right off the coast, you know, where I live in Los Angeles. And what's happening is there's a paradigm shift and that's not a term scientists use lightly, a paradigm shift in how we can protect and restore kelp forests. Now what happened, Michael mentioned there's 90% 90, 90 loss of kelp around California. Um, this has happened quite recently in the last 10 years. And particularly in September 2014, there's this thing called the warm blob, which you can see here, this huge red blob of water around the west coast of North America. And this was driven by climate change. And that plus other impacts humans have had on, on kelp forests, such as taking out otters and other things, precipitated a state change. <clears throat> in the kelp forest, where the kelp forest disappeared and replaced by what's in this picture now called sea urchin barrens. So you can imagine there was a healthy kelp forest in this image before the urchins took over and multiplied to the point where there was no kelp left. Now urchins are critical parts of the ecosystem. They eat basically kelp detritus and there's usually only a few of them per square meter and they actually recycle the kelp just like a mushroom recycles dead wood in a forest. Now, in this instance, they've actually expanded their population to where they've eaten the base of the kelp and the kelp holdfast, as it's called, floats away because it's got it's eaten and all the kelp plant floats away. And then there's nothing left. You have this barren. And these are stable to last in this state for 50 to 100 years as the urchins essentially turn into little zombies and hibernate. So the way, the way to fix that, and this is the paradigm shift, is humans need to go in there and take the place of the predators that are no longer around and literally smash the urchins. And this is um, in our project in Palos Verdes off of Los Angeles, which is one of the world's largest kelp restoration projects and the most successful one. Um, just published their 10 year study paper showing that by going in and restoring these barrens, essentially smashing these urchins in the barrens, a healthy kelp forest can return in a few years, really within one year and within three to four years, it's just as healthy as it would have been had it never disappeared in the first place. It's actually quite an extraordinary result showing that you know humans can come in and be stewards of the ecosystem. We can't, we don't have to just let the, the, the kelp forest come back on its own and not touch it. It won't come back. So MPAs have been shown not to help restore kelp forests when they've been replaced by an urchin baron. So we can actually take that role. So here's a before and after of a of a patch of reef, basically showing that within one year you have a fully grown kelp forest because kelp is the fastest growing plant in the world. It grows roughly up to two feet per day. And then in a few years later, all the predators, everything comes back and it's healthy again. So now why do kelp forests matter? Um, and blue carbon, why does that matter? It's because 90% of all the carbon in the carbon cycle is in the ocean. And kelp forests, mangrove forests, seagrass meadows, coral reefs, those are the coastal ecosystems that move carbon into the ocean faster than anything else on earth. And that includes they sequester carbon faster than even like rainforests or grasslands, um, anything on land, oceans are the place to go. And this is an example of how it works. Like you imagine you have this kelp forest here on the left, you know, kelp grows rapidly up to two feet per day, takes up CO2, and then kelp often breaks out and pieces will float out to sea and they'll sink the deep ocean or the urchins, if they're not forming the barren, but are in hidden in the rocks and the crevices where, as they should be, in a healthy forest, then they munch up the, the kelp detritus and that dissolved carbon also exports to the deep ocean. And the deep ocean is what we're looking for as a solution to climate change. That's where 
and this was an image of the carbon cycle on the entire Earth. Um, Ninety percent of the carbon in the ocean is in, or in the world, is in the ocean. So if we're going to take CO2 out of the atmosphere and put it anywhere, the best place, the most natural place, the place where the Earth has always done it over geologic time, is the ocean. And the way that we can help make that happen is by supporting the conservation and restoration of blue carbon ecosystems around the world. That is the single biggest solution to taking CO2 out of the atmosphere in a permanent way. It also has a lot of other benefits, such as you know, protecting ecosystems, um, creating endangered species, creating rec recreation opportunities, and so on. So that's it for my quick science side, and I'll kick it back over to Cassia and Michael. Well, thank you so much for that. I mean, it really helps to paint a picture, Kevin. And, and I definitely am just like so interested, obviously, in ocean health and knowing that, you know, a lot of people really point to, and thank you for highlighting that, point to how imperative it is to plant trees on land. And it's really, you know, something people, a lot of people aren't aware of or thinking about and our ocean health and how the ocean and these kelp forests and mangrove forests are such a huge sequester of carbon and so imperative to the full health and homeostasis of our planet. Um, Ashley, I'm kind of, you know, I know you do a lot with the, uh, you know, sustain a surf and it'd be rad um, to kind of just hear from you a little bit about your connection to kelp and the healing powers of the ocean. You as a shaper and as a songwriter and a surfer. I mean, I've had the pleasure of knowing you for far too long to even say on this on this thing. I don't want to date us both, but, <laughs> you know, you're an eco warrior in all the ways. And it would just be awesome to hear like, you know, um, a lot of your thoughts and feelings around kelp up in Santa Cruz. There's so much of it. Thanks, Cass. It's super fun to, to be able to do this with you, um, all of you, really. Um, but yeah, um, so I we, we've we known each other since we were down surfing in Malibu, but for the last 15 years or so, I've been up in Santa Cruz. And um, we're blessed with beautiful kelp up here. We also have a lot of sea otters, and it's more, more balanced around here. And um, to see pictures of um, just the different urchin barrens and uh, how it's taking over in places like Fort Bragg. And um, the, uh, I mean, it's like, before I talked to Michael with Sustainable Surf about it, it was like, huh, what's happening to all the kelp? I remember talking with um, Wayne Rich um, and him telling me about the, um, the kelp forest, how there used to be tons of kelp in Palos Verdes and I thought huh really is it was it brown kelp is it why isn't it there anymore is the water too warm and um just to kind of understand uh what's going on with the balance and everything is it it's been really interesting and sad and wonderful all at the same time because of the the awareness being brought to it and um and what sustainable surf is doing and sea trees so it's it's pretty awesome um but yeah basically up here we just i i mean i i'm a big fan of seaweed <laughs> in general and um i think it's amazing how fast um giant brown kelp grows i remember having a botany class in in college and uh, my botany teacher saying that it um what is it like if you grow up to a, a it's two feet in a day, which is amazing. You can almost see it growing. Um, yeah, under yeah. optimal conditions, actually, that's it's it's crazy. So um, it normally grows about fourteen inches per day, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But in the height of it, yeah, it, it can grow up to two feet a day. That is, you can literally see it growing, right? Um, and it's the fastest growing, um, yeah, sort of organism that's in the sea, right? Yeah, that's the power it has to regenerate. It's incredible. And you know, it's it's interesting. I've been a surf instructor for many years, um, and seaweed's always been like that. And sharks are the main fears of people. <laughs> and one of my um, one of the things that I would tell people is, oh, seaweed's actually you know all the blessings that that um, that we have from the kelp forests, and um, one of them being a lot of people don't realize they're in so many products that that we have um and we we're talking about this recently michael and cassie um just how how it's in everything and um you could probably speak 
better on this um, about the different kilt farms, but just uh, how how it's in a lot of what we do, um, and we you know we take it for granted because we don't even realize um, yeah. ice cream from it. Yeah, yeah, cosmetics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's smooth, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> um, biofuels even. Mm -hmm. We've even, uh, there's been surfboard blanks made out of algae before. So um, yeah, in, in Santa Cruz, we have a magical playground. I have, my son's gonna be seven in a couple of days and to imagine his world without picking up these different kelp specimens and showing them to me as, as he's learning about it and all the joys and wonders that he receives from that, that he is observing and learning about, but also that he, he doesn't even know about that touches his life. And um, I think that um, I'm super grateful for Sea Trees for the awareness that it's helping um, bring to people so that we could, um, through our figuring out what we could do on an individual basis, like buying the, the sea urchin shirt and donating to sea trees, uh, all these little things, like we we do make a difference. And sometimes it gets overwhelming um, what's happening to the world, but remembering the connectivity of all of us and the littlest things are huge things because everything that we do makes a difference. And um, yesterday I was thinking a lot about cause and effect. There's, you know, every, Every cause has an effect, and are we going to be affected by our cause? <laughs> and also, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. I love that point, Ashley. And and yeah, that kind of cause and effect, right? It's like these are thriving kelp forests, and then you know, there's not as many urchins. There's enough urchins for the otters to eat. They're getting fed, and it's a balanced ecosystem. And it goes back to balance, and and also Charlie's artwork. It's like also as a surfer, stepping on urchins is the worst thing. I mean, I'm like way more terrified on stepping on urchins than getting tangled in seaweed. And and that's actually like, you know, kind of Kevin pointed out, smashing those urchins or having enough, you know, otters to keep a harmony and a balance within the ecosystem. So, Charlie, can we can we kind of kick it to you and hear about your beautiful creation for these shirts and like talk a little bit about your inspiration for them? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, can you all hear hear me OK? OK, yeah. Um, yeah. well, I came into uh learning about sea urchins and everything else that they're connected to kind of na naively in, in a way. I was really interested in the image of, of this kind of circular form um, as a painter and as an artist. Um, I grew up skateboarding and I was really interested in skate graphics and got into surfing about 20 years ago um, after moving to California and so this sort of image of the sea urchin, it, it, it's kind of changed for me a lot the more I've learned about what, what it actually means to me and what it means to everything that, that eats it and how, what it provides for the ocean. And um, so I, I'll just give you a little bit of background. I've been, I don't know if, I've been doing these shows for a long time. So I, I just have some postcards um, from shows like being in San Francisco, uh, I did some work with Thomas Campbell in a show. And locally, I live in West Marin, um, gotten some write-ups and some papers, just... Um, point raise light, yeah! Yeah, point raise light. And I've gone as far as turning catalogs, like this tool catalog that came in the, the mail, which is kind of ridiculous, into an advertisement for uh, like clearance for ocean creatures because the ocean is slowly being depleted unless we of this natural source unless we do something about it so i was really excited to um meet all and, and i'm really excited to get to know all of you guys and and become part of this cause of helping the kelp forests come back so there can be a balanced ecosystem and um so you know just using this year and i have a painting behind me right now um this is a piece that I've been working on um, as well. It's an oil painting. Um, 
and it's just it's just to me it's a fascinating image and um and for one of the reasons i i mean just thinking of why it matters um more on a on sort of like a metaphysical level um why do these animals matter to us even if we don't see them many, many of us don't dive many of us don't um we're not actually in contact with them unless you're surfing or you know that part of a recreational le level like interacting with them but um i think on a just knowing they're there it's kind of like um you know a lot of people get into like their soul animal or like their their connection to the to the sea in some other way that we live on this really vibrant planet and um it, we're so lucky to be here and i think as you know being able to have the abilities that we have as humans um why not take care of these things and why not allow them to thrive um just as we want to and be part of them and have more interaction with them and i feel like here we are in the apex sort of in the hourglass in time where the earth is changing so rapidly and um, so I, I'm really happy to be involved with this and um, share my art. And as I keep learning about what it is that, I'm, that I've tapped into here just by a naive fascination with, a, with a, the sea urchin and it as an object. And um, I basically paint the form after it has died and all the, the little spines have fallen off. And it almost seems like it has this, other code or message in it um telling us you know something about balance and it being this circular form and kind of a mandala and um so i think there's a deeper message in in what it's what just the physical aspect of what it is and um so i'm really excited to have you know been to provide that image um, for a t-shirt. I think it's a great, you know, it's just, you know, just showing that you're part of this larger, larger thing that's happening in the world and happening in our backyards. And, um, you know, think, thinking about like um, the other things that, you know, I was really impacted by the idea of um, all the, how many of the starfish died in, 2015 from the warming waters and those being predators as well of sea urchins and that also maybe having an impact on why it's out of balance so um it's really made me look at the sea urchin different it's 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 kind of like a yin yang there's a there's a bright colorful side to it it's a balanced thing but it's also this uh predator that um can be out of control and i i feel like it really echoes who we are as a species and, you know, just the similarities if, if we don't use our abilities and, and protect what um, we love so much. So that's, I mean, I could, that's, that's kind of where it stems from. Um, and I don't know if any of you have any questions or anything else. I could show you some other things in the studio, but. Um, yeah, let me cut in for just a second here, guys. Um, so, uh, Charlie, that's such a cool observation. It's almost like the sea urchins are like a reflection of us, right? It's like we have sort of that yin and yang. It's like we have these bright, positive things, and we have these impacts that we're actually, uh, you know, creating. And in the same way that the sea urchins are out of balance um, here in California, again, you know, where we live, you know, from San Francisco up, 95% of all kelp forests in California have been wiped out, right? That's, you know, imagine if 95% of all the redwood trees or the forests, you know, in California had been wiped out in the last seven years, right? Everyone would know about it, right? Yeah. It's really hard for people to know about it because these are our underwater um, rainforest. Uh, actually, yeah. Well, they're, they're like the sequoias of the sea, as they've been called, right? Um, and uh, having your art um, be a way into this thing right so people may not be able to see the kelp forest but if they see this really uh, kind of striking art and you know I, just as someone who's been living in the san francisco bay for the last uh 15 years you know the reason i wanted you to come and be a part of this collab is that your aunt or sorry your art 
And those urchins, you know, like if you've been in the surf scene and down on, uh, you know, Judah and uh, Irving Street and whatever else, and people have seen, you know, this really sort of like haunting, like it's almost like a spaceship or like this other, you know, kind of worldly thing, you know, that's in, uh, you know, it's been in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, Dave's restaurant Outerlands, you know, and it's on this side of the wall up in Proof Lab here in uh, Marin, and it's uh, in, uh, you know, art galleries. The people that have a um, organic food company who are in the offices next to us, they have one of your big paintings, right? This image has sort of been haunting me for the last 15 <laughs> years, right? Of like, like, wow, there's like something like really iconic about it. And, uh, you know, for me, that really is like, hey, like, this is kind of a representation um, of us and maybe our way sort of out of it. So, um, so the other people can actually see the, you know, a quick tour of the things I've been looking at the last 15 years. Can you give us like a spin around your uh, artist studio space there? Yeah, sure. Um, so hopefully this doesn't, let me know if this cuts out at all. I, hope, I don't think it will, but um, yeah, I'll just give you a closer look. Um, I've been making paintings on recycled redwood. Um, so this is a kind of a close up of it. And there's a lot of color and detail. Um, just really looking at this thing on a closer level and just um, trying to, you know, in a way that, um, you know, kind of like a lot of advertising works, I'm, I've been isolating the form. So it, it has kind of like, a, gives it a different level of, of how we view it and just, you know, taking it out of the ocean. And um, so, yeah, I'll just spin around my studio here. This is, that catalog is a very large painting and, um, you know, I incorporated things from the sea. They're almost kind of like little tarot cards where I'm writing and- um, It's amazing, right? You're like, yeah, languages. here, it's all for sale, right? Yeah, in a way, so it's kind of satirical, you know, a little kind of finding a way to make, make lighten, enlighten this situation without it being so daunting. So, you know, I took some, uh, some um, cables and added some, um, what do you call it, crab claws. And then I actually made some of these physically. So I don't know if you can see, I mean, so actually like kind of turn them into products. And, <laughs> Those are epic, yeah. So, you know, a lot of fun stuff. And then I, you know, have other paintings here of the urchin in different different forms or um, ways to to display it. So I don't know, I'm just playing around with the idea. And, you know, and besides that, like I, sometimes I find detritus with um, pretty amazing things on it. I don't know if you can see up in here, but there's a coral from Japan growing on this uh, crate. Um, I can't really get close enough to it here, with my computer, but. Yeah, I remember seeing that when I went and visited your uh, studio. Um, yeah, that so, crate came all the way from Japan, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it has Japanese writing on it. It's a, it's a Kirin crate. And I've done some stuff with, you know, there was a whale that washed up in Bellinas. So I started playing with different imagery and um, just, you know, there's a lot of different way, different things that in, in ways that the oceans really inspired me. And um, also these prints, I, sometimes the paintings are a bit, um, they, I mean, they get, they get a little, I spend so much time on them. So it's nice to also have a print and wear a t-shirt or something that is a little more affordable and also going to a good cause. So I, I'm, once again, thank you guys for helping, you know, bring my work out into the world and, and it be connected to a larger, a larger thing that's actually making an impact rather than just complaining about the situation or just enlightening the subject with no, no, no like way of, of bringing it to resolution. So yeah, there's a positive way forward, man. You know, we're, yeah. we're so stoked and honored that, um, your art can help raise the awareness and provide this entry point, you know, to this, you know, really, um, you know, critical um, worldwide problem, right? You know, it's not just here in California, it's in um, Australia, it's in um, the UK, right? So yeah, it, it's great to have this as like, oh, okay, this captures kind of my eyeballs, you know, what does this mean? And it also does good 
um, along the way. And, you know, it's kind of an entry point for, you know, maybe the next thing that Cassie, I think we're going to talk about is, you know, what are, what are things that people can do? Right. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I think it's like, okay, well, we can all say, and we can all acknowledge that we are a giant part of the problem and we are the solution yeah. by choosing to get involved by just being able to share information like what these beautiful you know paintings are doing and what you all are doing with sea trees is helping to educate people because yeah you can't see under the ocean and everything looks groovy and the water looks pretty on right. top yeah. and it's like yeah. a it's all good. day and it's also like you know in that you know what what science really has highlighted is that we have maybe nine years left to make a dramatic impact in how we live our lives Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're just going to be witnessing all different forms of I like what Charlie brought it to that macro and micro vision of like us being those, um, you know, us being those urchins having consumed everything and there being wastelands of it. And and I say that nine years because you know, that has what science has outlined. And it's not going to be like in nine years, we're all going to destruct and it can be overwhelming. And by just like, you know, kind of highlighting some of the problems and realizing the ocean is the ocean. All the oceans come together through the gyres, like the oceans here in California, they're witnessing the same things in Australia and they're witnessing yeah. because it's like we have taken and put, it, you know, put things out of balance. And by us choosing to be involved each and every day in each and every way and put things back in balance. And if we all start doing our part, the seven plus billion people on the planet, if we all can activate and change our trajectory, that one degree, we can all be shifting the trajectory of where the planet's headed. And it is the 11th inning and it's time to activate now. And these beautiful trees, you know, these beautiful uh, t-shirts just by buying them, you know, you guys are planting a bunch of sea trees. And, and I think it's about, yeah, like highlighting some of these um, issues and also highlighting some of the ways that we can all be part of the solution. So I'd love to hear from kind of everybody around that, you know, it's like, these uh, urchins didn't take over from one thing. It's like, okay, the starfish population, okay, and the global temperature warming, and then there's not enough otters. I mean, we used to have otters down here in Los Angeles and LA Bay. They haven't been around here till like, you know, you hear about old timers being like, in the 50s and 60s, there were otters out there. I'm like, what? They're so cute, you know, those little buddies. Like, I wish the otters would come back, you know? It's yep. like, I used to see Garibaldi's when me and Ashley were kids surfing out at Leo Carrillo. I haven't seen a Garibaldi at Leo Carrillo in over a decade, and that's our California state fish. And so right. wow. as we start to be regenerative stewards of, of the planet in these different places, we're going to see that. So yeah, I'd love to hear from everybody speaking to kind of some issues or maybe outlining an issue and a solution that they yeah. see. Hey, um, I definitely don't want to bogart this, but let me just kind of I'll provide a framework here, right? Because um, as you pointed out, right, it's not these different oceans and different places with their own um, simply unique things. We have one global ocean. It's all connected, right? Um, the marine heat waves that have been hitting Australia and wiping out um, over 50% of the Great Barrier Reef, right? That's the same mechanism that happened um, over here that Kevin outlined, right? The warm blob. It's a marine heat wave. Um, instead of having coral reefs, we have kelp forests, but it's doing basically the same thing. It's knocking the system um, out of balance, right? So, you know, just to kind of get back to the core of this, you know, and, and again, why we started Sustainable Surf in the first place and specifically the Sea Trees program was to focus on what can we do as ocean lovers, as surfers, right? To do our part to literally reverse climate change. Um, and, you know, that's where we're at. So, yes, we have a direct way in terms of healing very specific um, ecosystems that we go out and find uh, uh, that need to be repaired. We find the local partners. We do the due diligence. We actually go visit each and every site. So, you know, we plant mangroves in Indonesia. We plant mangroves in uh, Kenya. We're helping to protect an entire coastal watershed in uh, Cambodia on the Gulf of Thailand, right? We have two kelp projects now <clears throat> in uh, California, one in Palos Verdes in um, Los Angeles, and then one, um, yeah, just kind of a stone's uh, you know, throw from 
uh, Ashley's place in uh, Monterey, California, right? So we're making it possible for people to donate directly and plant a tree or restore a square foot here. Um, but the things that people can do in their regular life, that's really sort of the key here, right? Because there's kind of two things happening. One is we need to basically reduce the amount of impact that we're creating on our ocean planet in the first place. And then we have to do the repair work to bring back what's already been damaged, right? Sea trees is about repairing that uh, damage. What we really have to do, is I, I say, you know, we basically have to learn how to walk and chew gum at the same time, right? It's like, cool, what can we do in our daily lives? And that really comes down to, you know, um, where your food comes from, right? Um, do you have renewable energy? Can you sign up for it, you know, through your local um, energy company? Or, you know, can you get solar panels? Um, what kind of car do you drive? Or can you choose to ride a bike, you know? Things like carrying your own water, not buying plastic water, right? Um, besides the plastic pollution issue, um, you know, bottled water has a gigantic footprint. It's moving water around, right? Um, you know, uh, the ways that you uh, give back and the daily choices that you make, like every single day about the things that you buy, like literally you are voting with your wallet for the kind of world that we all are gonna live in every single time you actually do that, right? So thinking about it, it actually shows the power that, you know, we as surfers, consumers, um, you know, people who need to buy stuff during the day for our families, friends, and kids, like, we're voting for the kind of world that we want anyway. We have to realize that, oh, we could actually vote for a world that's super rad and regenerative, you know, or one that's just extractive and, um, you know, keeps going. So um, with that, you know, let me just kind of shut up, but that's like, that's kind of where we're at. It's like our own daily choices. And yes, we have to repair the damage that we've done. You know, if I could jump in real quick on, on that, what you've said and what Cassie just said, when we talk about climate change and as scientists, I think about, how bad climate change really is, you think to be a superhero to even have any impact on this. Like, what can I do? I'm one person, it's a, a global thing, right? But climate change really is being caused by the impacts of individuals collectively around the world. Like, you know, 20% uh, of China's carbon footprint comes from making stuff that Americans buy, for example. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. so it really does come down to individual choices. And the way to think about it is like this, the, superhero in the story is not humans, it's actually the earth, the ocean, ecosystems, photosynthesis, things that take CO2 out of the atmosphere naturally and have done so for billions of years. We have to help things grow, like we're the sidekick, we just have to help things grow. At the same time, knowing when the better choices are you know, in our own life, the combination of those two things is actually how we solve this problem and it can be very effective. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Very effective. And, and also, I think there's just like such an opportunity to just communicate it, be a part of the conversation, because by you being part of a conversation and like yeah. sharing that, it's really educating more people around that. And and if we all make those different little adjustments every day, I mean, one of the largest um, creators of carbon on the planet is actually data and data processors. So go on your Your farms. Yeah. <laughs> delete all the photos you don't need. Go on your hard drive, delete all the stuff that lives. Don't save it to the cloud. It doesn't just poof, disappear. It's actually a lot of those data farms are also being mined under the ocean. So there's so many ways that we can make those choices each and every day. You don't need a billion selfies in your phone. You know, just, just by deleting all those things off the cloud, like you're actually making a huge impact. I mean, you know, if... I would love to hear like, cause we have a couple questions from the audience and I want to be mindful of everybody's time. And we only have a couple minutes left. You know, we have like 10 minutes or 11 minutes left. So I'd love to hear, you know, from Ashley and we have a question from Mathilde. What makes the panelists most optimistic about the future of environmental conservation? So, you know, basically what makes you the most optimistic about the future of environmental conservation? I think self-empowerment, you know, that's just been a big life lesson for me lately. And, and um, I think that it's <laughs> just as Kevin was saying, you know, the things that we could do on an individual basis um, and people discovering that, whether it's within themselves on the spiritual level or um, linking to the environment, which is all connected, you know, it's, it's making the change within yourself. And I, I think that 
um, I, I see more and more of that. And maybe it's just because I'm realizing how powerful I am or I can be. And I think people recognizing that in themselves and how amazing we all truly are. You're, you're, you're not wasted away in the, in the grand scheme of things. Every decision we make is very important. And so that not only makes me optimistic, it brings me joy to think about the gifts that each individual can bring. So, yeah. <laughs> Right on, Ashley. That is it, you know, and, and going back to the gifts we can all bring, how we are. As much as we have contributed to the problem, we also are the solution. So by just choosing to empower ourselves and activate, I love that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, Charlie, we have another question from the audience for you. And it's about how does art open up an important dialogue to the climate conversation? And this is a question from Peter. Hmm. Um, well, it definitely, I th you know, just in terms of the direction I've gone, um, I've learned so much from just my intentions of wa wanting to know more. And the more it's, the more I get involved in all of this, the more I learn. And I'm excited to share that with other people. And I think just the conversation alone. I mean, we get so lost in, in ourselves and, you know, taking care of family or, or, you know, just these kind of things that re are really important. But I think also, you know, the, the time I've spent in the ocean that's informed my practice has gone into my work. And it, it's also been a really healing mechanism and a really, um, it's, it's the ocean for me is kind of a safe place to, and it, it, washes a lot of anxiety away and you know just learning about that whole cycle and everything that um that supporting each other and supporting ourselves i've i've learned that through my art and sharing that with other people and becoming part of a community like you guys that are um really concerned about it and want to make a difference and keeping it you know and we're not all freaking out about it we're I mean, we are a little bit, but we're we're also making light of the subject and and keeping that that festivity alive in in what we love. So, I mean, that's I don't know if that touches on the the answer, but that's that's kind of where it's taken me. So beautiful, thank you so much, Charlie. And it's it's just so nice to hear about you know how just your work as an artist really has just like informed every part of that conversation and that quest, and just paying it forward and inspiring us all through this project. And now we have these cool shirts that you can yeah. all get. And if you buy one, it goes into planting kelp forest. So that's how you can help in a big way. And that takes us to Michael. I have a question for you, and. Lisa is asking what she can do as an individual to help preserve the health of kelp forests. So you've highlighted a lot of those issues. Yeah. If you were just to kind of bullet point it for us, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, such a great question. Again, it's this uh, sort of two part thing, right? It's like the things you can do in your daily life to just limit and lower the impact specific to climate change. Cause ultimately, like I said, that's what's driving what's happening right here in California, right? So um, yeah, choosing local, choosing um, uh, organic, choosing to ride your bike instead of, um, you know, driving your car, the, the things in your daily life, right? Um, that actually lower and then find ways to support, uh, you know, climate, um, uh, conservation projects that actually do something direct um, to help the planet pull uh, CO2 out of the atmosphere and store it back into the earth, right? Because the reason that we got here is we dug all that carbon up to burn it in fossil fuels. That's what raised the temperature um, of the planet. That's what's going in uh, to the ocean. And uh, again, you know, just to highlight, you know, one great way that we try to like all of our programs try to provide this uh, cool, easy on-ramp, right? For people to take a direct action uh, in that way to help heal uh, the ocean planet. So um, do what I did yesterday. And I bought one of these shirts myself <laughs> because 
they're just so rad, right? And um, like you said, it's like um, these small actions that you can take. Um, that shirt that you're wearing, Cassia, um, is going to be helping us to fund the the you know world changing project that we've been doing with the Bay. Yeah, exactly, right. Um, that we've been doing um, in partnership with our local partner at the Bay Foundation. Um, they're right out of Santa Monica um, to restore five square feet of um, kelp forest right here in California. Um, and if you're wondering how we got the five square feet, it actually comes because uh, Charlie and I are totally both nerds as well. And um, we're kind of nerding out on the fact that um, you know, uh, urchins and starfish actually um, are uh, from the same family, right? And they both have this, uh, basically this uh, uh, five part um, segmentation, right? So there are these little stars out there. So basically, you know, we're using that five part segmentation as a um, you know representative of like each of these urchins is you know going to be restoring five square feet. So yeah, easy. I love it. Thank you so much. And yeah, getting involved is huge and key, whether it's through donation, whether it's through, you know, buying something awesome that you're going to love and it'll also yep. help share that conversation because people are going to ask you about your t-shirt and then you can oh, for sure. People are be like, whoa, what is that thing? Right. And you're like, yeah. oh, like actually a sea urchin. Um, and Charlie, you know, you've made it in this such cool, iconic thing that it doesn't like read like as a sea urchin. It reads as this like crazy moonscape thing, right? Like it really opens up that, that conversation. You're like, yeah, you know, this is a rad sea urchin. And, and here's, you know, here's the issue right here that you don't even know about. Right. Um, and if, if I can just say one thing, um, the conversation that uh, Ashley and I were having, um, I mean, you know, surfers can be pretty selfish, right? <laughs> uh, especially about surfing. And, you know, if anyone's wondering, uh, well, how does that really impact me? You know, Ashley can tell you right now, if she didn't have that big kelp band out at Pleasure Point, um, the waves at Pleasure Point would be way more messed up. Like the kelp mm -hmm. actually keeps, you know, the surf glassy, right? Like that's a, you know, yeah. do it for selfish reasons if you need to. Do it for selfish reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep it yeah. classy, keep it classy. Well, yeah, you know, right. we're, we're getting to the last minutes of our, our program. And so I want to be mindful of everybody's time. So they have enough time to go online and hopefully buy one of these awesome t-shirts and help uh, plant some seeds in our kelp forests around California. And then actually, I know that you have a beautiful ocean song that you would like to kind of, you know, grace us forward with, um, you know, and, and too, it's like, yeah. And, and Kevin, we had one more question for you, but I think you answered it. So, um, you know, if, if just being mindful of time, if Ash, you want to kind of just, you know, let us all kind of like listen to your melodies and, and thank you all so much. Yeah. Um, most of my songs are love songs, but this one uh, came to mind through just listening to different things we've talked about. Um, it's called Wash Wash It Away. Gonna wake up or cause empty again. It's gonna fill my day. Each moment you want look through the residue. Start a clean slate. Go on and wash it away. Start again. Well, I'm early. And I can simplify. I want to wait. Breathe it in. Feel my pride. Or I can try. Or I can hide. I've got a lot of love to balance all my sins and I can restore again and again. Maybe it's the bones I that I don't need to hit, but I keep on going and in and in. Oh, I wash it away. Start again. I want to wash it away. Or I'll start again. Well, I'm right here. I've been here the whole 
that we make on this world, we can't always rewind and start again, or we never can, <laughs> really. <laughs> but we could always start new at this very moment. So I, I really appreciate Sea Trees giving a chance for that. And um, it's, it's uplifting, and I hope that um, you all feel that same joy that I feel with it. That was awesome, Ashley. Thanks. <laughs> Epic, Ashley. I love it. And, and you know, thank you to the kind humans folks for making this happen. Thank you so much for Kevin and Michael and, and the Sea Trees organization and all that you are doing to educate us and to also give us opportunities to get involved by creating solutions that are so actionable and are also like something that's just like, hey, you know, this kelp wants to grow. Let's just give it the space to grow. And I know you guys also have a lot going on, uh, you know, just legislature wise and why it's so important to get money because a lot of yeah. these marine protected areas, you know, um, the urchins are protected species and they're also totally out of balance. So, you know, everybody get involved and, and really, you know, support sea trees in every way because yeah, a lot of those monies go to lawyers that like don't really understand. They're like, well, they're protected and we got to get this stuff going. And, understandably so and we can bring things back into balance harmoniously and and charlie for your fantastically beautiful inspiring work and all that you create i Thank love you. my t-shirt please go get them everybody can't all wait right. to get mine yeah me too and ashley i love your songs always and <laughs> it's just been such a beautifully um educational hour with each and every one of you. And I hope everybody is feeling the same way, inspired and empowered to be a part of the solution. Cause I truly believe together we can. That's what's up. That is what's up. Um, thanks to kind humans again. They're amazing partners. We've known them for a long time. And um, yeah, we're blessed to have uh, good people like everyone here um, and everyone who tuned in. Thanks. We couldn't, we can't do the work that we do um, by ourselves. We have to do it through the community. So thanks, everyone. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs>